I am proud to present Sigurther's Spark Gap Tesla Coil version 2.0. To walk you through it. Light switch on off switch. DC power to the quenching fan. 7500 volt uh, neon sign transformer, 30 milliamps, current regulated. Quarter inch electrode spark gap set at 0 0.1748 inches gap, which is roughly 10,603 volts. That essentially allows the capacitor to charge up to full. Quenching fan, DC, isolated from the rest of the circuit. This here is the MMC capacitor array, which is rated at 16,000 volts, um, 0 0.0176 microfarads, which is 17.6 nanofarads. It's actually 17.64. Quarter inch copper pipe tubing for the primary and spiral. This here just insulates the first turn lead-in from the rest of the circuit. Here you can see the first turn connection there. This yellow jumper and the green one there going to a bleeder resistor just for the entire MMC array. I know that each capacitor does not get fully discharged. I found that out the hard way. But it does take the lethal edge off of it, so it's mostly harmless as long as you don't get really badly shocked. I will be installing bleeder resistors on every capacitor later on. Secondary. Glorious, glorious secondary. There's not one manufacturing defect in the entire secondary. I went on this by hand with no jig. That's uh, <laughs> my not so fancy top load. It is a uh, square steel box, or rectangular I suppose, and uh, just a little breakout point on it. I kind of taped over with aluminum and electrical tape the uh, edges there to limit the breakout on the corners. It's a uh, approximately 1621 turn, 30 gauge, uh, HPN enameled, on a 4.5 inch outside diameter form. That's uh, 4 inch PVC is what they normally call it. Here's my primary tap, battery clamp, 14 gauge stranded. It's off and around, right over there into a spark gap. It's a classic design with the uh, Parallel spark gap series capacitor. This here is just the RF ground point. That's not the actual ground connection. That is just for this strike rail. This is between the strike rail and the tip of the breakout point is 10 inches. This goes down, connects over to the main RF ground line. 14 gauge stranded. I know that's not ideal, but it seems to work fine. That goes off. So that yellow cable there, that is a dedicated RF ground for my ham shack. It is disconnected from my radio equipment right now. That is uh, the equivalent of 8 gauge stranded direct out to a array of four 8 foot ground rods. So that is quite a good RF ground. I worked quite hard on this and I was very disappointed and very depressed yesterday when I first fired it up outside to have no real output at all and tremendous tuning problems. And you know what it turned out to be? The table I was turning, I was trying it on. It had too much steel in it, and it sapped the inductance from the tank circuit, which then made it look like the secondary had too much capacitance. And at 14 and 3 quarter turns, which is tremendous for the amount you'd normally put in one of these coils, it would not tune. Brought it in today to work on it a little bit and repair one broken off tap section, and uh, fired it up, and lo and behold, it worked great. Almost right where I had it tuned, too. So lesson learned, build it on wood, insulate it with plexiglass, but do not put metal near it. Alright, who's ready to see this? It is loud. Earplugs are a necessity. Just forgive the shaky camera while I get the earplugs on. Alright. I may have to adjust the lighting, but here goes.